Hi, this is cycle two, week 19 science. This is uh, paper airplanes. This is a, a cool opportunity to uh, let your uh, students get some hands-on experience folding paper airplanes, making paper airplanes, and, um, and potentially testing paper airplanes out. More about that here um, in, in just a second. The, the purpose of uh, weeks 19 through 23 in cycle two is to, is to engineer to build a number of different um, of things, paper airplanes, towers, bridges, egg protectors, things like that. And all of those are going to be tested uh, in week 24 science. So what uh, the paper airplanes that your students are making today, you definitely want to save some of them. So uh, plan for that. So if you want to allow them to make um, a couple different options and then maybe take some of them home and pick one that they want to keep and save, that, that would sort of be uh, my recommendation. There's a number of uh, commercially available options to help you uh, to make uh, these kits. If, if you're going to make paper airplanes, um, then you obviously need paper uh, in order for the students to fold. And again, I would bring plenty so that they can fold uh, lots of different ones. If you're going to do uh, paper airplanes, I, I suggest you pre-fold a couple of options so that uh, your students can see them and they can kind of get a sense uh, of, what, uh, of what to do. To, to that end, there are uh, commercially available kits from, uh, from Lighthouse, from um, Oriental Trading Company, uh, from Usborne. Uh, there's many, many different options uh, if, if, uh, for you uh, to use. Something that I've used successfully a lot in the past is this Usborne book. And there's a couple of different paper airplane books uh, put out by Usborne. Uh, I, I really like this, this, um, this book. It, it offers you uh, four different folding designs, and it has step-by-step -step instructions for all uh, four uh, different paper airplane uh, d designs so that the students can, um, can, can fold them. In, a, in addition to that, uh, it, it's set up so that the, the uh, fancy artwork um, here is, is laid out for you. There's, there's clear instructions in the book so that you can tell that, for example, this particular uh, page here, they recommend you fold it as the jet design. The, the jet design again back in the, in, in the front. You could fold whichever one you want, but if you fold uh, the jet design, then they've designed it so that the, that the illustrations will kind of end up in a cool spot uh, on the airplane. For example, if we fold, this is the jet design here, and when we fold it, then we see the, the cool face you know, is right there. So this is the, the jet design. Um, this is the dart design in the, in the Usborne book. Uh, kind of neat and, and fun. This is uh, the glider. Again, right, you can see folded so that it's illustrated. And then this one is called the bug. <laughs> the bug. Now, these are all not going to fly the same distance. They're all not going to fly in the same way. And that would be something for maybe to encourage your students. Um, bring at least a couple of different designs so that they can practice folding so that you can help them. Um, and then that they can, um, you know, potentially start to, to try and, and decide which design would work best, which design will go, go the furthest, which one um, flies the best. There are, um, all of these designs are about the same. They're about seven or eight steps to fold. And that's probably what I would recommend. You know, there's, there's super, super complicated, you know, origami uh, paper airplane designs out there um, that, that uh, would be cool. So, so think about it if that's what you want to do. But uh, for your students, uh, it, depending on the age of the kids, especially the simpler the design, the, the easier um, it would be to fold. You don't have to do um, paper airplanes. That's, that's what um, is recommended and set up, but there are many other options uh, out there. Uh, our director helped, helped us uh, do some research and found some super cool foam airplane uh, designs. This is uh, one kit that's available. It comes with two different kinds of foam airplanes. This one is, of course, super cool with the propeller. Right. These, this is a little bit um, larger version. This is small. There's no propeller here. But this is another option that's available. Again, these are foam. Uh, one comment I have then is uh, because we're making airplanes, it is... It, to me, it's, it's a great opportunity um, to talk a little bit about the engineering of airplanes, to talk about the science uh, of airplanes, to kind of help uh, uh, put some of that grammar um, into your students' minds. If um, the, the foam airplanes will be, I think, quicker and easier to assemble. So if you want to spend a lot of time talking about the engineering and the science, then maybe you want to consider that. Uh, maybe you want to have your students fold as you're talking, it probably depends on how much um, adult help 
that you have in the room because some of the students will definitely need some help. But that's something uh, to think about. Uh, it, in, in my opinion, I would at least talk about the four forces that are acting upon airplanes um, as, as they're moving. We have the, the weight of the airplane, which we all know is the force of gravity pulling on the mass of the airplane. We have the lift force. We have the drag force. Uh, and we also have the thrust force of the, of the engines as they're pushing the plane uh, through the sky. So those four forces then and, and how they're interacting on the plane um, have different scenarios. So as the plane is taking off, there, there's one issue as the plane is in level flight. They're in a different balance as the plane is beginning its descent. And then finally, as the plane is coming all the way in and landing. Um, and, and you could talk about um, the four forces and sort of their relative magnitude, I guess. Uh, you know, so it meaning what I mean by that is um, as the plane is taking off, the, the thrust is increasing the entire time, right? And, and the lift uh, on the plane is, is greater than the weight of the plane. And that's why the plane begins to rise. Things like that. When you're in level flight, now the lift and the weight of the plane are being balanced. That's why it's level flight. And then as you're as you're decreasing the lift, as you're landing, is what I mean. Then the the, the lift is being decreased. Of course, in a very controlled way, right? As as many of us have flown uh, and, and feel that. Um, but similarly, as the as the plane begins to like turn in the sky, then you you have different forces um, acting acting upon it. Um, there's just a lot here um, that you could talk about. I would definitely talk about those four forces uh, and, and talk about those. So, so again, lift is the force that's pushing up uh, on the airplane. The weight of the plane is the gravity pulling on the mass. The thrust is the force that the engines are exerting. Um, and, and the uh, drag is, is effectively the friction of the plane as it's moving through the, the fluid of, of the sky. If you want to go a little bit further, you could talk about um, some of the engineering in modern airplanes. You could talk about how the, um, the, the tail of the airplane, the rear of the airplane, um, has both uh, the, the rudder that, that, that moves in this way. It also has the elevators uh, that move up and down. Uh, on a typical um, plane, uh, and all of those things uh, help um, change the way the force is acting on the planes, you know, for takeoff uh, and for landing purposes. Um, the, the airfoil, that, that's sort of the, the technical name of the shape of the wing of the airplane. The airfoil is designed with a very specific shape so the, that, um, that the air moves o over the wing in a very controlled uh, manner. But then there's, again, there's different engineering pieces. There's, there's the slats and the flaps and the spoilers, and all of those parts, the pilots use in different phases of the flight to accomplish different things. So that's a lot of grammar that, that you can introduce to your students. Um, there's a lot of good resources uh, available beyond that, especially for the older kids. If you want um, uh, to, to go into it, uh, I know it's not very uh, stick in the sand to, to use videos uh, in your classes. Um, there are a number though uh, of really good resources uh, out there that are designed uh, for children to help them understand the, the, the science and the physics and the engineering behind how planes um, operate. And so whether you want to use that in your class, whether you want to maybe um, find some good resources and make those available uh, to your, your, your parents if they want to take it home, all of that's sort of between you um, and, and your director. But, but again, uh, there, there are a number of, of good options um, that, that are available. There, there's one video in particular that I like, uh, and we'll put a link to it uh, in our comments below just for your consideration, uh, something for you uh, to think about. This is um, a really cool week. This is good hands-on stuff. I think all of the kids um, will enjoy doing it. Uh, if you're going to use paper airplanes, then I definitely suggest br bringing at least three or four um, folded options for the kids to look at. Bring multiple sets of the instructions. Of course, let them have a chance to fold them. Um, and potentially, if, if you want to, let them have a chance to test it out and see kind of which one they think goes the farthest um, so that they can kind of make one and reserve it uh, for week 24 uh, science. Airplanes are amazing marvels. Uh, it's wonderful. It, it's amazing. It's definitely something that you should talk about, how God has created us with the ability to understand the world that he's made, right? Again, we, we talk all the time about how science is, is sort of getting into God's creation and understanding how it works. Um, and, and airplanes surround us. Many of your students will likely have flown on airplanes. So it's, it's something that's very much within their everyday experience. Um, and it's really cool. And so it's a good opportunity to let them fold some planes and to talk a little bit uh, about what goes on uh, and how we, we have used our brains that God has made and given us the ability to understand how uh, the modern airplane 
uh, works and how we're able to use it. Uh, this is very cool stuff, and I know that uh, your students will enjoy it. This is Cycle 2, Week 19 Science.